Hello everyone. I uh, hope you are all doing fine uh, this Sunday. I hope you are having a lot of fun at the conference. Uh, sadly, I couldn't make it myself in person uh, this year yet again. Uh, I missed last year as well. Um, hopefully, if things are going as planned next year, uh, I will be able to make it in person. Uh, however, uh, this time, another conference, another micro S talk, and there has been quite some micro S talks already. Um, I would like to share my micro S journey. Uh, this goes back uh, at till the end of 2019 until today uh, so it, it gives quite some some time <laughs> uh, for for me to, to to play and work with micro s work on micro s um, and uh, and to share uh, some of the things that I've run into uh, what most of you are running into uh, let it be uh, micro s on the server side or micro s on the desktop side which is now Ian Ian Ian, Ian. Um, sorry Richard, um, but essentially I would like to share all the, the different complications uh, what came with me switching uh, from traditional systems, mutable systems to immutable systems and what were the challenges, what were the pains, uh, What uh, considering that I'm very active on the Telegram side of things, I can see a lot of users are having pretty much the same problems or similar problems uh, and they really believe that Micros is this uh, super restrictive uh, system and uh, things can go south really really quick. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, who am I? Right. Uh, my name is Attila Pinter. Uh, some of you may know me as Adathor. I, I've been fairly active. Uh, uh, in the past few years in OpenSUSE, I'm, I'm mostly active on the Telegram sign. I'm, I was helping out with documentation, still do some documentation. Um, but mostly nowadays, unfortunately, I had to step away from the project uh, to to be able to, to focus on work. Uh, but uh, hopefully this will be changing very soon. Um, right. Previously on how I did things, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Essentially, we had a fleet of uh, uh, storage-focused server solutions, right? So these are very simple devices, hardware devices, uh, physical servers, what we are talking about, running Leap and ClusterFS and a couple of additional things, custom tooling, that sort of stuff. And we deploy these things to, to different customers or just rent it out to data centers and so on. Uh, the, these were all running Leap at the beginning this this goes back about seven years or so um, most of the desktop side of things were running tumbleweed uh, very few workstations were uh, running leap uh, let it be at home or at my own organization or at my own workstation <coughs> My workstation was always on, on, on Tumbleweed, uh, nothing else really worked. Uh, always needed that, uh, you know, that rolling uh, state of things and, and everything has to be up to date and, and modern and I don't like to wait really, I'm, I'm just impatient. Um, anyhow, I, I, I digress. Um, <coughs> The way uh, we, we handle things like updates and configuration management and where are we storing ABC packages and what are the list of packages that we require to, to run uh, a service or uh, run storage solutions or do any of these things, set up development environments. Uh, the, this was always done with uh, Ansible and Git. Uh, so essentially it's like a GitOps type strategy, but nowadays they label uh, as GitOps. But essentially this is how it was done, that we had a, a GitLab uh, repository, uh, we stored uh, different configurations, different roles, collections, and then we use those, pull those in, and just deploy. Uh, there, there is no magic in that. Uh, they, this, this was almost all of them are uh, RPM packages, very few Docker containers, uh, because I really didn't like Docker containers. I still don't like Docker containers. But it was a very generic system, like uh, like most mutable uh, systems, like my most normal users uh, have. Um, 
I don't know if we as Linux users qualify as normal users. Uh, anyhow. <coughs> Then uh, the Open Source Asia Summit happened in 2019, October, I believe, uh, where Max had a very interesting presentation about Cubic. Um, that, that, that really caught my attention. It was new, it was different, it was, it was uh, absolutely something that I had no idea about or how it works. I, I, I knew about uh, the transactional and atomic uh, systems at the time, uh, I, I think even Leap, we, we had a few Leap servers which was uh, running with transactional updates, uh, not in production though, just for playing with. But then never really understood it fully how how it really works and we're just like well, okay it's just a different package manager what do we care right <clears throat> Uh, but uh, during that conference, I, I, was, I was able to, to get a little more I insights uh, from Max. And uh, he pointed out a couple of things about immutable systems about, and uh, about Cubic uh, specifically. Now, keep in mind that Cubic was a, a Kubernetes distribution, uh, which was really interesting for us, uh, running quite a lot of services on, on top of other solutions. Um, so this was, this was really interesting that we would be able to take uh, a distribution which has all the tools in it uh, that you would need to, to maintain a Kubernetes cluster on premise or in the cloud or wherever you can install it. So this was this whole idea was very attractive, uh, very attractive to us, uh, of course. And then I was like, hey, hold on. <laughs> so what any of these things mean? Uh, it, it was really fuzzy. Uh, I had a picture in my head, but here again, it's just just a different package management. And uh, it turned out that it wasn't. So <clears throat> we started to evaluate uh, Cubic and Micros in 2020, uh, because we haven't had anything else to do. Uh, other than being <coughs> logged up and just uh, playing with the toys. Um, so, so we started to play with it. Uh, quite some time later, uh, we started to come out with the, the, the first uh, kind of impressions and reactions and that we, we have to look deeper into the, the whole containerized ecosystem and and how we we would be able to, to fit this whole uh, thing in to work for us. Essentially <clears throat> what we want to do is do the same thing but do it faster, do it better and with less interruption. So we have more time for the fun and you know, just just playing with things, trying out new t technologies and such. So uh, we we really quickly came up with a, with a list of of missing things. Uh, the, the the system was and still is super lean. It, it was very nice, very slim, uh, incredibly quick to to load it, and uh, every time we press the button, it just comes up and it's fast. <clears throat> but we were still missing a couple of things, like the firewall. <laughs> I, I had a major freak out about that uh, a while ago. Uh, uh, I hope Richard doesn't remember that. Um, <laughs> but uh, essentially, Richard was the person who helped me through this whole reasoning of why we don't need a firewall. Um, we we ended up not using one, and until today we don't have one because this is this this is absolutely right from the project point of view that if you have something installed and it needs to listen, it, you would open that port anyway. Um, and if we are talking about cloud deployment, uh, for example, uh, we have a couple of Linodes uh, running with microOS, uh, which which are all custom installations. <coughs> um, we we have uh, firewall solutions from directly from the the cloud service provider. So why wouldn't we need this on the system? Well, the only reason we need it is to to have uh, not only the inbound logs but also the outbound. But uh, we kind of get around that uh, using uh, generic solutions like uh, Prometheus. <coughs> So, so we have an idea what comes and goes in the system still without installing a firewall. So that's one less package. Uh, well, actually, quite a few package. Um, 
the other thing what really bugged us is uh, how the system works uh, with transactional updates and the, the constant reboots what we had to do uh, every day. It was really new uh, that we really need to re reboot this frequently. Uh, now keep in mind that we do uh, keep the systems uh, up to date and we do re reboot them but we are talking about once a week not uh, multiple times a day uh, yeah we, we will get back to that <laughs> why um, we had to define maintenance windows uh, in the system uh, for reboot managers so uh, all the nodes are not uh, rebooting uh, all at the same time so these, these were all new to us. Uh, it was really, really new. Uh, but we really quickly started to, to love this self-maintaining idea. Because if, uh, if we can get this right without writing kilometer-long playbooks uh, to, to have the system uh, maintain themselves um, with all the conditions... But instead, we can just define the maintenance windows and the length of those on the system themselves, and we just get the feedback through the metric system, to, to, through the monitoring system. That helps a, uh, helps us a lot. So we don't need to run all of these things. Um, so the the not how it works part, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the constant rebooting is what I mean here. Um, so basically, okay, we installed everything as RPMs, right? So <clears throat> you know how it is. So you get used to something and you just want to keep using it because if you don't have to learn a new tool because the old one still works, then you will stick with that. And oh boy, we were wrong, like really wrong, and it 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 happened really quick, really fast, uh, that we had to realize that, that this is not going to work. So all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, the systems that started out with a few hundred packages uh, suddenly grew up to like two, two, two and a half thousand packages, and it was fat and slow, and updates were failing. Uh, it was a nightmare. Um, but lessons learned. Um, just because you can doesn't mean that you should and I, I used to say this quite a lot here and there but but a uh, matter of the fact that we didn't listen to this we didn't listen to to, to the developers um, <clears throat> there were very few documentations available at the time but the documentation said this explicitly, even at the time, that you shouldn't uh, install packages into the snapshots uh, that you don't need, uh, essentially, for having the system to run. And uh, at the time, we had the, the toolbox method, right, for installing diagnostic tools, installing all the tools that we would need for for the server, and, uh, and we started to take uh, massive, uh, massive advantage of that. Uh, th this Robox wasn't really uh, a thing at the time. Uh, that's that's more on the desktop side. Um, I still find Toolbox today uh, a better option on, on the server side. It's leaner and starts faster. Uh, what we didn't uh, essentially install into the system, onto the, the whole systems, are uh, tools such as uh, VPN uh, or, or mesh VPN solutions, what we are using for connecting all these uh, infrastructure components together. Uh, this is Nebula, WireGuard, and, and such and such. Uh, different kernel modules to, to make uh, the the two and a half gig, 10 gig NICs running uh, in the systems, what we are deploying. So the, the, these things were all going to the host. So let transactional app, they'll handle that. But we need those to, to, to keep the systems running, right? So th there is no going around that. And that's perfectly fine. Um, but everything else had to go into toolboxes. Um, but I still don't like Docker. Um, luckily, there, there are a couple of alternatives, really good alternatives out there. Like Podman, Nerd Control, and uh, Cryo. Uh, Cryo is more on the container runtime for for Kubernetes uh, side of things, but uh, but it does a really good job. 
and uh, they, they are really good at, at replacing Docker. And I really like the idea that uh, Cubic uh, was, was running with Cryo. It was a solid decision. Uh, and we really enjoyed working with it. Uh, we, we actually uh, took advantage of uh, Cryo and Cubic a number of times when we uh, accidentally malconfigured our uh, registry project. Uh, we, we are using Harbor and uh, we made a, a configuration error where we accidentally erased the images uh, based on the age, not based on the size. So our quota system was all, all wrong. So essentially, we ended up uh, not having images in the registry. So some of the, the clusters were complaining, complaining and uh, failing to, to, to do what they're supposed to do. Um, but with Cryo, we were able to extract the, the system uh, from the system the images uh, where it was still present and just push it back to the registry. So it saved us quite a lot of time. Um, Podman is, is just fantastic to, to integrate with the system. The uh, in 4.5 uh, recently, it was getting a lot more updates. It just works really well uh, to to manage the different container services. Uh, and Earth Control is just uh, a, a, an immediate replacement for, for, for Docker. Uh, the point is that we, we never liked the idea of uh, running every single container uh, with root, uh, at least not on the, 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 the host side. So the, the daemon is still run by root. There's no going around that. Uh, well, I guess you could, but what's the point if you have all these tools out of the box doing that for you? So this this solved us <coughs> a lot of problems, and it was much easier to, to, to get to uh, work with containers. Uh, and then the config management, right? So as I mentioned, we be using Ansible and GitOps uh, to, to manage all this stuff. And, and the thing is that uh, Ansible still just works fine. Um, we're just doing it differently. So uh, I listed out a few collections here, what we are using, such as uh, Community Kubernetes, or uh, I, I believe Kubernetes core is not even valid anymore. Um, but uh, some Docker stuff is here, Podman. Uh, so we are essentially doing the same thing, but, uh, but in, in, within containers. And uh, it's still the same game. Just easier, um, same config management tool, same solutions, uh, just faster. So <laughs> by mid 22, uh, 2022, uh, this, this was the go-to. So if we need to deploy a server that has to go with MicroS, no questions about it. Um, it, it, it took us over <laughs> in a matter of months. So uh, by the end of 2020, we, we were at the point that, okay, we need to have stuff where we can install this because it's so good and it saves us so much uh, uh, energy that we just started to, to migrate all these things uh, from uh, from Leap and Tumbleweed uh, onto MicroS. This, this was involving some of the desktops, uh, but uh, the, the desktops were only coming around 2022. So by mid-2022, we had about six, to, six petabyte, closer to seven, uh, of uh, storage out in the wild with ClusterFS uh, that we migrated uh, away from Leap uh, to, to MicroS. We had about 23 servers. Uh, entire load was moved into Cubic. Uh, so the 23 server has been freed up. And with about half of it, uh, we were able to, to migrate everything uh, into to, to Cubic and Kubernetes. We were we were already doing some uh, uh, some Kubernetes deployments, but uh, mo mostly on on cloud providers like Google uh, Cloud, uh, because it was easier. It was just just a lot easier than maintaining and running it locally. Uh, anyhow, uh, most of the required services that uh, that we were running, such as databases, uh, tunnels, uh, reverse proxies, <laughs> and so on. 
all of these things were were moved from the the traditional RPM installation into containers. Uh, this was providing us with a with a, with a lot of uh, sanity and and just easier deployment and and disaster recovery. Uh, so essentially, the, the the way we kept uh, all of this alive is uh, just by CI/CD pipelines uh, taking the container files, executing what's in them, pushing it to a registry. From the registry, it comes down to the systems. And this was a daily cycle. So we, we never had issues with this, that how are we going to maintain the images, right? Because <laughs> uh, from, from that point onward, everything is just code, essentially. Um, and the CI tools, uh, the GitLab CI is great, Drone CI, uh, or the actions, GitHub actions, are, are really good for, for taking care of this. And uh, monoton, repetitive tasks, and uh, having the ecosystem up to date all the time. So the DevOps is nice. <laughs> so we, we, we managed to, to, to have all this running, and, and all the Kirks worked out, it, it, it was just Fantastic, uh, but then Cubic just died. So Cubic has been sunset, uh, I believe, last year sometime, um, and we were still running <laughs> few clusters even after it was long gone. Um, but uh, yeah, the, 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 this this was one of those moments that oh, okay, uh, what are we going to do about this now? Because we, we were super comfortable with the uh, with the tooling around Cubic, right? So it, it not so much about the the, the distribution, uh, but the tooling around it. What uh, what the community was 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 building around it. And it was just super easy to, to maintain your cluster or, or just build a cluster. So here again, this is the recovery. If anything happens, at this point, we don't think twice that what should we do? What, what we do is just wipe and rebuild and easy. It's, it's really quick. And we are facing about 30 minutes of downtime uh, at, at worst. <coughs> so, uh, and not like we ever had to pull the trigger on that, but it was always, uh, uh, you know, it's it's always in the back of your head when you when you working anywhere uh, in your production environment. So this was important for us. Um, so how are we moving forward? Uh, Micros didn't die. Um, if I recall this correctly, uh, Micros was a was a baby project uh, from from Cubic. Um, and essentially it suppressed it. Um, we still have combustion in the system uh, and uh, Ketrius was very much running. Um, so we were like, okay, let's look into this, how we would be able to get Rancher uh, into MicroS in an automated way, but it also has to maintain itself. So what we ended up doing is uh, writing, this is, this is just a snippet, um, but we ended up writing uh, combustion files um, specifically for MicroS for deploying uh, K3S. So what this uh, little script uh, does essentially is uh, just just creates a K3S node. Uh, I, I believe this is from master. So it pulls from the upstream, right? It installs it and uh, just creates a, a unit file that maintains it and installs it. Uh, and to, to, to update the whole thing, it is simply just, you know, <laughs> wipe it. And with the, with the next uh, start, it, it will be there and it will be updated. So it will run just fine. So it was it was really easy for us to 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 come up almost overnight uh, with a solution that okay what are we going to do we already tested Rancher we already knew what Rancher is <coughs> already knew how Rancher works we just had to come up with a way that essentially MicroS on the first boot is able to to set up a whole cluster for us um, currently even at home I I have a six node uh, K3S uh, cluster. 
running with this exact solution. So they, they solved a, a lot of things for us. But then you could ask that, okay, all of your systems worked with Leap and Tumbleweed and all these mutable systems, so why? <laughs> why Why would you go through all this pain, all this migration? Um, it's simple, really. Um, <laughs> We had, we had systems and services that are self-maintained. They update themselves. They, they don't really have downtimes. Uh, we have all the tooling around it, right? So if the system updates themselves in the designated maintenance window, I know that they will always come back. So Health Checker was there fairly early on, and it was, and it still is really easy to to configure and write write your your own uh, Health Checker scripts for the system to, to to check if your services are actually running. And if it's not running, it will reboot it, uh, restores the previous snapshot, and the next time it will try the same thing again, and it will do it until it until it at some point it will work and if it doesn't work we, we can still monitor these uh, situations and we can just go into the system and, and fix if something is really broken um, we have all the tools uh, to, to, to get the systems to reach self-maintaining, uh, self-maintenance uh, with transactional update, Podman Auto update, <coughs> Ansible with drone CI and GitHub Actions, uh, Argo CD and GitOps for our rancher. Um, if you don't know Argo CD, look into it, uh, especially if you're into Kubernetes, but you probably heard about it already. Um, it's, it's a really great tool for keeping uh, the, the, the systems constantly up to date. Uh, we were essentially able to unify all the environments across the board and uh, uh, just, just have more time for innovation and, and working on stuff that we actually like to do. Uh, not, not just uh, constantly following uh, all these CV lists and, and oh my god, when are we going to update? Oh my god, we need to notify the, the customer. In this, in this case, the customer knows exactly that whenever the systems are updating, they will come back in about half a minute uh, or, or a minute uh, with all the services running. And if they don't come back, which actually never happened yet, uh, then, then they know that there, there is probably something wrong and they, they know who to call. So it gives you that, that sanity check, basically, that you don't need to worry about these things anymore. That, oh, I need to track this or I need to track that. We, we still do tracking, uh, especially on, uh, on vulnerabilities, but you know, it's, it's not taking up that much time of, of our data. Oh, okay, there is a vulnerability. Has this been fixed? <laughs> yeah, it has been fixed. The update is already in place. So. Yeah, it, it saves a lot, a uh, lot of uh, time and effort. Uh, we haven't had any major incidents or outages in the past two years, uh, which, which is kind of kind of telling something. I think the longest downtime we had once was was about ten minutes, uh, fifteen minutes, uh, because uh, yeah, the server just got a bigger load, but it had nothing to do with microOS. Um, we essentially reached the state where we have centralized maintenance. Uh, long story short, uh, a computer's job is best done by, by a computer. Uh, so let the computer do it. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, look into containerization. Don't be scared of containers. Uh, try out micro as desktop Aeon. Uh, try out Aeon, give it a go, uh, it's awesome. Uh, and if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to uh, drop me an email. Thank you, and have a lot of fun.